Hello, welcome back. After uh, the summer period and some time to think about the, the webinars, we wait a little bit to know how, what was the situation in Portugal regarding the, the physical meetups. And we decided to still uh, continue doing webinars for now. And first of all, I want to thank Rui Quintino for the talk he's going to present. I will present him in, later in the slides. But I want to thank him for being our first speaker after the summer vacation that was uh, quite long. This is our 82 uh, meetup in the webinar form. This is the agenda for today. We'll go through this presentation that the people that are uh, usual in these meetups are sick to see. After, Rui Quintino will present Power BI for Data Science and Machine Learning. It will be a presentation with hands-on approach. After, we'll have a Q&A and the closing session. For people that doesn't know us, we are the SPT. We are an informal community that intend to uh, spread the knowledge and uh, disseminate machine learning, artificial intelligence, data science knowledge to all the members. We promote knowledge sharing, open events, and break barriers between speakers, audience, between people that are veterans in the in the field, between people that are trying to start the field right now. What you don't want in our uh, community is shameless promotion, marketing, hiring policies. We just want to have an open, clear community to share uh, knowledge and share uh, ideas regarding data science. We are located in five cities currently, Aveiro, Braga, Coimbra, Lisbon, and Porto. Uh, but for March onward, we are having uh, virtual events, not physical ones. In the near future, we may uh, resume physical events, but that depends on the pandemic state uh, that is currently going on in Portugal. If you want to know more about the group, you can check our website, datascienceportugal.com. You have information regarding meetups, not only from the other group, but uh, similar groups. We have uh, job applications. We have other events. We have uh, machine learning schools. We have a lot of information. We try to compile it all together so it's easier for all you to, to explore. These are our communities. We have an, a, a relative uh, active community in Slack. We have also uh, active communities in Facebook, Meetup, and LinkedIn. But if you want live uh, conversation between any of the members, Slack is your uh, best bet. So you can join us in each other of social media links or in these virtual meetups. I will also want to thank Farfetch for sponsoring this event. And we have a call for proposals. If you have uh, have done some research or you have some interesting idea for a presentation or you know someone that has done some research or have an interesting idea in this area, please fill the form. We'll evaluate your proposals and we, but you may be selected as a speaker for the future events. We have partner events, partner events that we are real, uh, that we are involved with. And the next one will be AI for biometrics in January of 2021. The, there is a Q&A session and we, ha we have different technologies from Slido to, to, to other platforms. Now it's simpler. You just write your questions in the YouTube chat and members of our team will collect them and make them available to our speaker. So you just, you don't have to log in in other, any other platform, just write your question in the YouTube chat. Again, I want to thank Rui Quintino. He is a AI and holistic strategy advisor at DevScope. He mainly works with Microsoft uh, big data tools and he's going to present Power BI, one of Microsoft open source, uh, uh, not open source, but free tool for uh, 
uh, managing data. And the presentation is called Power BI for Data Science and Machine Learning. So thank you, Rokintino, and I hope uh, to hear your presentation right now. Thank you very much, Data Science PT team. And thank you, everyone, for, for joining. So uh, let's start. Uh, this will be a kind of a fast-paced session. OK, so. Uh, so I'm Rui Quintino, I'll leave you my, my contact. Um, in case you have feedback on this topic, I would be really, really interested in, uh, in, uh, in knowing that. If you want to check a few other resources related to AI analytics, also uh, sharing the links, the slides will be available on Data Science PT repository, and I'll probably uh, share also on SlideShare after. Uh, probably they are already on Data Science PT GitHub repo. So. So let's start, and this is data science community. So I don't know if Power BI is a well-known tool, so let's start there first. So what's what's Power BI? Right, and um, so I will give you my very own personal uh, interpretation. So uh, for me, it is a highly, very successful and powerful uh, data and business understanding, and this is very relevant. And it is a low to no code platform. You can code also, but the main point for me is this is an amazing platform. And just to share with you some of the typical outputs that you can get uh, with, with Power BI uh, very easily uh, from the, the user experience and from the developer experience, it's a, 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 great, a great tool. So typical dashboards and reports, and all of these is not just you know uh, really beautiful, but al also highly interactive. You will see a few a few demos later on. So everything that you can see here, you can actually uh, build and get rather easily. Okay, if you have some design skills, obviously to to help. You can even, with Power BI, publish uh, public data that, that you want to share with the world. Even on a free edition, you can do it, OK? So you can very easily, uh, with a, a few clicks uh, and options, just publish beautiful dashboards that can make data useful for everyone in, in, the, in the net. So that's a glimpse of, of Power BI. So, but why, why is it so powerful and what's different from the typical data science tool, right? So first, it has a very strong data prep um, uh, tool, uh, features. So you can use visually, you can go uh, step by step and, and get a preview of all the transforms that you are applying to, to your data. If you are more of a, 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 more of a code person, there is code, so it, actually Power BI Data Prep Power Query is producing all this code behind the scenes that you can actually edit and use IntelliSense. It's not Visual Studio Code or, or Visual Studio, but it's it's really, really good. Uh, you have built-in profiling, uh, profiling. You can check uh, distributions of columns rather easily. So it's an amazing user experience for, for doing uh, data preparation. So first of all, it's typically a first step. Then, and the, the the case is that you know typically business um, business data is not a single table like we are used to see on machine learning, right? So uh, in reality, it, it cannot be, be captured in, in a single table. So Power BI is a very strong uh, semantic model, which it, it's not very complex to to get the, the feeling because it's mostly tables and relationships. And this allows you to build very complex analytical solutions just using these tables and relationships together with something that we'll see next. It is a formal engine. And also this is also uh, powered by a very fast column store engine. So Power BI, it's really, really fast, even with millions of, of rows. Then after you have the semantic model, you can actually create uh, also uh, formulas uh, that reflect your business rules, right? You can count, you can mean, you can do medians, uh, complex year to date calculations, and it's a very powerful language. It's called DAX, okay? It can be easy at start. It's really powerful, but if you want to master it, it will need more time, obviously. 
And this, uh, together with the semantic modeling, allows to be very productive when you then want to create uh, dashboards, interactive dashboards and reports, because all goes to the semantic model and you reuse everything. Uh, so it, it, we will understand, hopefully, uh, in, the, in the following slides, OK? So, and with all this, we, we did the, the data preparation, we build a semantic model, and we create formulas that react in real time uh, to all the filters that we are using in, in the context. And all of these then allows you as a developer, as a BI developer, or, or as a dashboard developer to build these kind of dashboards very, very easily. And this is the final user experience that you get when your users are using Power BI, right? You can click, you can drill down, you can drill up, you can cross filter, and this is with zero lines of code, okay? This is dashboards that you can do in minutes. Obviously, then if, if you want to make them really beautiful, it may take some more time, but you can do dashboards like this in minutes as long as you have some... A semantic model properly designed. So in Power BI, typically we almost always we don't do exploratory data analysis from raw data directly. No, we first build a rich semantic model. So that means that we we define the relationships between our business tables. All the names, all the columns, you know, it can have spaces, it can have accents because the point is. with underscores and lowercase columns, no, no. And so after you prepare this rich semantic model, that's when you can do your exploratory data analysis, uh, in this case for data science and machine learning, because you will be reusing this semantic model again and again and again. And th that's why it, it's, it's so freaking amazing. W one thing that you should know, so everything that I will be showing today is mostly uh, you, you can get the Power BI desktop tool, which is free. Uh, it runs on Windows only, sorry. So it works offline and all the features that you will see aside from AutoML work free with Power BI desktop with a huge amount of, of, uh, of data, no limits almost in Power BI desktop. So it's it's really, really cool. So it's not something that you have to pay. Everything that I will show to you today, you can immediately use. So, and uh, one important note, I will be mostly showing what you can do and where Power BI can help. I will not be as concerned to show you how you do this, okay? Because for that, you, you will need much more time, but I want to ensure you that most of these that I will show you did not take me much time. I'm far from an expert in Power BI, so you should know that. So a few use cases for specifically data science and machine learning. So one very important first tip, honestly, and um, you know I know R Shiny. Um, I've worked quite uh, a lot uh, in the past with Shiny. I use the Plotly Dash, amazing tools and even the new Streamlit uh, for Python, which is pretty, it's, it's really cool. And uh, I don't know, actually, this was from my teammate, uh, Luis Kosh. I don't know what, what it is, but it is damn pretty cool. So, but even with these tools, uh, if, and th this would be my first advice, because I, I've seen this a few times, and I think it's actually an anti-pattern. So, I mean, Shiny, Python, Streamlit, these are great tools for building apps and, and for leverage, leveraging some, some techniques, machine learning, all of that. You know, these are not for business intelligence and reports and dashboards. It's just, it's not productive enough. You will cripple your business users' uh, needs uh, and you will cripple also your data science team's productivity. Okay, because it's just, it's uh, it's not even comparable. Uh, you know, you have security, you have new releases every every month. So if you are doing business reports and dashboards, 
do it in a proper tool for these, like Power BI. There are others, but Power BI is amazing. So in free or data scientists to work on other tasks. Okay, that's that's really important, in my opinion. So, but aside from that, aside from from that tip, and if you look into the typical um, data science process or, or the cross industry of very old process, but I think it's it's really good as a starting point, and you have this business understanding, data understanding. So, where Power BI can help, typically from my experience. So, it pretty much can help. And remember the one of the first slides on business and data understanding. It's amazing, even on data preparation and evaluation. I will show you a few cases of this. And more recently, actually, you can, uh, using the new AutoML, which is not free, you need a, a specific version of, of Power BI, but you can even, even do modeling, uh, machine learning modeling, and then deployment with Power BI. So actually, it covers pretty much all these, all these steps. So, Another use case that uh, I've been using this for quite some time, it, it, it's always work great, always. It's like when you need to present results from a data science project or initiative, Power BI is really strong. I mean, you can go to a, a, a meeting and, and show Python or Jupyter to your, to your stakeholders, but honestly, if you, if you take the time to proper prepare some uh, reports that explore that information and make that information available in Power BI, I promise you that will make a huge difference, okay? It may seem small detail, it is not. We have to really show our work. It's, 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 so this works pretty well. In this case, imagine a market basket analysis that you then leverage and use and present in Power BI with dynamic reports, even images. So it's really cool. So another that uh, we use a lot, it's for uh, exploratory data analysis, for example, in forecast projects. And we have been evolving our, uh, mostly it's almost like a template for forecast projects because I, you can reuse Power BI templates. And then imagine that you have a new time series that you can see actually here. So you can just plug in a new time series, but all the, the, the typical patterns of seasonality by day of the week or by month or by the, the, the holidays, typically, you can reuse that again and again and again, and you can improve and you can benef benefit of all the interactivity, the native interactivity from Power BI, right? So, because in this case, these are this is the very well-known taxi New York taxi data set, and you can immediately see that there are different seasonal patterns depending on the location, which makes perfect sense. How much time would you need to build something like this in R or, or Bookie or Matplotlib? I mean, it, amazing tools, but you know, it's it's um, this is is really awesome. And uh, related to this, it's also an amazing tool for actually comparing if you are doing machine learning, you are trying different things, you are trying different models. So it's it's an amazing tool for this, for exploring your different models outputs. So if you are in a, a competition, these will be submissions. For example, if you are in a project, could be models, different versions, okay, that's what you see here. So I can actually have multiple models that I can compare in Power BI and you know, I I, it, I didn't need a full week to develop this. So it's um, it's really if if you know how to prepare a simple model, you can go very far in Power BI. You don't need to be an expert in Power BI. So this is an amazing and something that we use a lot. And related to this, related to this, I have to tell you there is. These, these days, not a single machine learning competition, I think, where we don't use Power BI. And uh, it does work, okay? It won't allow you to win a competition with Power BI, but is a huge help for discovering insights, uh, ideas for feature engineering, uh, detecting issues with data sets. This is a very recent one, just to, to, to to show you and for you to understand, it's it's really it's really useful, and here it is. So 
every competition, we develop a Power BI model that supports either exploratory data analysis of the initial data sets or uh, the submissions, which is very, very important. And I cannot show much details on this one because this is actually ongoing. Um, but for example, on this one, again, another competition where we use Power BI um, extensively, both for uh, the time series analysis, uh, exploration, and also for the submissions that, that you can see here. So every submission before submitting to, in this case, it was Kaggle, was exhaustively checked for any issues, if it made sense visually regarding the time series forecast. So, and I must say it worked pretty well. Uh, it was not the only tool in the toolbox, but we won this competition. So again, Power BI was, was an amazing tool for this. And there is actually a, a slide share with some notes if you want to, to check, it's uh, publicly available. More recently, a very interesting use case from uh, Microsoft, for example. So they have a, a, a customer growth team for cloud and AI. And it is interesting because this team published recently an article uh, showing all the, the Power BI, everything is mostly Power BI that they built to do machine learning gov governance. So from checking and registering all the model versions, even data drift. Uh, so they all of this is being monitored with uh, um, with Power BI. I thought so. The links are in the in the slides, by the way. So if you want to check the slides later, the, the links are are directly in the images. So great, great one. And I mean, what what makes Power BI so powerful for this? Well, it's actually because you have a huge amount of rich uh, exploratory data analysis features. For example, you can run R and Python interactively. So you, you have an R script, and then you connect that to your Power BI reports and dashboards in a way that it reacts and it is executed automatically as you use normal, regular Power BI filters. So this is very powerful. So this is, a, uh, in this case, a very, um, uh, typical distribution plot uh, with different levels. So to check what predictors could be interesting on a typical wine data set in this case. So more things, you can actually ask questions regarding your model in natural language. So it's uh, for me, it's because I'm really lazy as, as some know, and this is, uh, is great. And then you can even use these to, instead of dragging and drop your visuals into your report pages, you can actually, instead of drag and drop, you can use the Q&A feature to, to do this. So you type visits by Iceland. And so you add visual, then you have another one. And obviously if you click the previous one, any bar in that chart will filter the chart in, in the right. So it's, I mean, it's, it's this, these things, right? It's it's damn cool. So for example, drill through, so like drill through is that when you have a, a report page that would be useful to jump, but keep the, the context. So if you are seeing a client on a specific table and now you want to jump to another report that you have, but pass the client along. So this is, you know, um, very easy to do in Power BI. So drill through, it's an amazing, uh, it's very typical to use with tables so that you go from the a total, from all the lines that contribute to that total or that average. So it's very cool for exploration. So a few other things, for example, for forecasting, you have native forecast, it's uh, exponential time smoothing ways, I think, obviously, that, um, and th this is similar to something that we will see still. Um, for example, I think this is much more useful to data scientists actually than business users because business users can shoot themselves in the foot if they don't understand what you what they're doing, right? But for example, for data scientists that are doing, you know, time series analysis or forecasting projects, it could be a, a quick baseline that you can configure very easily on any time series. So it's it's uh, 
it's very interesting actually on that competition on forecast that we won the first submission that we did the first baseline was done only with power bi so i just exported this forecast and submitted so it would not be enough to win the competition but you know it was a very reasonable baseline i i must say because the problem was also not very complex but so it has also built-in clustering uh, support again i think it should be for someone that knows what it's doing so it's interesting that power bi is not an official data science tool at least uh, yet but it has also this feature i think it uses uh, key means I'm not sure but but i think so so one thing for forecasting that it is really interesting it's this one so you, you have a time series and you can immediately you know we have a, a sudden increase here so power bi can analyze all that semantic model all the relationships and can show to us what he thinks could explain that sudden increase okay so you just right click analyze explain the increase or decrease depends obviously and so it will search through a lot of fields apply a huge amount of statistics and and uh, and machine learning techniques to to give you a few hints what 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 may be happening on on that uh, on that time zone in this case it found okay you know japan is an outlier here and may be contributing highly to to that increase and um, so it does this in seconds it's really really fast okay you can say it's not accurate you can do better in python and i bet you could but it would take i think much much more time so as a quick check it's it's really really amazing one evolution of this is very recent i think on the latest release of power bi desktop you have now a built-in anomaly detector which also not only points to the anomaly i mean it, it's not that great because we can visually see the anomaly uh, very well but again it will try to show what could be the um, fields that um, uh, drive that sudden anomaly or increase okay and after finding that you can actually pin the new finding to the report page so here it is explaining if things the region may may be the the main uh, the main reason for that increase and it, uh, the way that it does this is actually quite interesting and you know power bi i would say the power bi ai team i would say it's one of the more um you know creative and advanced research for using ai in business because they have such an amazing ideas okay of how to apply uh, machine learning for getting more more insights So I, I will show you now on, on live Power BI, Power BI Desktop a few other a few other options that I, I like to use. So let me switch to Power BI Desktop. So this is a, a live one, actually. So it's it's not the slide; it is a live one. And here we have the you know the typical Titanic data set that I think pretty much anyone knows. And uh, we have a very simple model. It's composed of only a single table here. And we have the survive, uh, which typically is used as a supervised uh, uh, machine learning task, uh, a binary classification. And here you can see the number of passengers that survived and, and did not survive. And one finding uh, that uh, Power BI is a, a feature here, it's very interesting. It's find me if you click a bar chart like this you can actually uh, ask power bi to find where is this distribution different and this is a very interesting question because typically these will point you to an immediate uh, uh, feature that may be the probably the top predictor for your model okay so let me click this and in a few seconds you can see that you know he, he detected that regarding gender 
female is very different. So as the, the general pattern of survival is this gray one that you see here, but for female, it is completely opposite. And if you know the Titanic data set and, and this task, you know that it's typically one of the most important features. So this was seconds. I didn't need to, to, to do any coding and I compare, I can compare here the female and the male. And obviously one, one is the opposite in this case of, of the other. And then you have the, the global average, okay? So, and rank below are additional features that are related like the, the title of the person and the class obviously of, of the, the ticket. And so this is a very quick glimpse, like, uh, you know, uh, how to call these the, I feel lucky, okay? I feel lucky feature importance in, in Power BI. But Power BI also has a, a very interesting visual. It's called the key influencers visual that is available natively in Power BI. And it allows you to do uh, similar things, uh, uh, but with a much more control than which with much more output. And imagine this again. So I configure for now the key influencer visual to analyze the survived column. So that means that I, as it is a, a, a categorical column, I now have to choose. So what do you want to analyze when survived, when, when they survive or did not. So let's choose no. And this immediately, as you are imagining, it will immediately convert this into a binary classification task. And I can start dragging and drop features, possible features. And yes, it detects, you know, when gender is male, actually you have three point, almost three times uh, the, the number uh, of, um, uh, of people that did not sur survive that the opposite you can see here, okay? And behind the scenes, it's doing a lot of uh, logistic re regression, statistical analysis, confidence intervals. It's doing that for you. I must say, and this is not official position from Microsoft, it is mine, that again, like the built-in forecast, honestly, I think this is a feature that should be used for data scientists in Power BI because business users, if they don't understand limits of observational data and regression and collinearity, all of that stuff, probably will shoot again themselves in, in the foot. But let me ask, let, let me add the class, also the title here. Sorry. Okay, this and you can add more and Okay, but this is really fast. So if you know what you are doing, it is uh, it, it can provide you great insights for your modeling uh, or, or or other related uh, related tasks. Uh, then you can all you can also check related, and this will relate to these findings here. What segments, which interesting interestingly, is not using clustering. So Microsoft is a, a very cool. Cool technique here is using a decision tree to actually identify that you know there is a segment here that uh, has 91 uh, as 91 uh, um, observations and where the survival rate is actually almost 90 percent so it's highly relevant and then you can drill down so this segment what it is, it is compared, it is defined by these rules that you can see here. So it is not first class, not third class, and the title is Mr. Okay, so which represents uh, pretty much uh, man. And uh, so a lot more more features that, uh, that you can explore. There is a huge amount of material on these key influencers uh, visual. It's, it's that great. I mean, it's, it's, it's really great in my opinion. Either you are you have a very very simple data set and you you know what you're doing, or I must say this should be more a feature for data scientists. And I don't know if uh, business users without statistical knowledge knowledge would be the, the best fit. But that is purely my perspective on this one, and that's why in 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 my all honest 
uh, honestly, I, I cannot call these influencers. So I use in in double quote because influencers, you know, it jumps rather easily to causality, and uh, you know, it's it's something that you won't get causes. You will get hints and some patterns that you want to check why they may be they may be happening. Okay. So, but still, it's really great as a jump start on some modeling that 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 you want to do and obviously all the interactive and and the drill down and filtering also works with this visual as any other visual so this one you already saw the find where this distribution is different so a few other tips and cool features that i think are, are cool to show so one and this is really cool i mean you have the semantic models, you produce a lot of reports and dashboards, and you think, okay, but now I want to rename the metric or something, I you can do it. The Power BI will rename everything everywhere. So it's it seems such a simple, but I mean for someone that works a lot also with Python and, and it's completely different, right? Like it's it's um, I feel free uh, when using Power BI. Uh, format, same thing. You can change the format for a metric and all the reports and dashboards will react accordingly. You can increase the, the number of decimal uh, places, the, the, the currency symbol, pretty much everything as it is model and metadata driven. So that's really, really powerful. Okay, it, it gives you a huge amount of freedom, freedom and productivity. It's that cool. So uh, one thing that you know it, it's very people uh, in, in machine learning and machine learning and data science talk about this quite a lot. It's reproducibility, and you know it's probably is pretty amazing on that. You can pretty much open a, a file that I had here from 2016, and I mean it. It's you have immediately the reports and dashboards that that uh, you built at the time. If you want, to, you can refresh the data but you don't have to because Power BI actually saves an optimized and compressed version of the data. So I'm not saying that, you know, it's it's like uh, fully reproducible, but, but honestly, it's 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 very practical. Uh, and you have Docker and all of those things for data science, but this pretty much rocks. I mean, you open and you, it's, it's again available. Uh, Power BI is not uh, for kind of you do like Excel input work, like uh, providing values, manual values, but you have interactivity options. So you can have sliders, you can run some simple simulations like you are seeing in this case, like if I'm doing forecast and that this in, in the case is it's profit based. And I want to, you know, profit define a, a trend, but I want to change the trend. Even that I can manipulate with, with Power BI. So that's pretty cool. So new, you know, Power BI Desktop and, and Power BI Online and Power BI Desktop today released a new version. This actually was from the previous one. So now you have these, you have uh, the zoom slider, uh, very useful for time series. I must say it's really cool. And this is from the, the release of today, finally, and now it uh, finally we have native small multiples and this is for me just critical uh, you could use some custom visuals to support these but uh, i mean having these natively it's really really awesome i don't know why it, it took so long it's it is a complex feature obviously but uh it's it is available if you download power, download power bi desktop today you will get this so it's damn cool you have to enable the preview feature but aside from that should work. So just a quick glimpse of AutoML. This is not a Power BI desktop feature. So this is a kind of premium feature, but I think it's relevant to show because after you have all this semantic model available, and I think in the future, I still dream that uh, AutoML has a lot of benefits of running, not from simple data sets, like a single table, but from semantic uh, models that can span a huge amount of tables. Okay, so I think AutoML is much more interestingly 
much more interesting that way. So you can pretty much, after having the, the semantic model, you pick the, the table name, the entity name, what is the field that you are trying to predict, uh, what is the task, obviously regression, classification, you can also do forecast, and you, you, you say how much time you want to, to use, and pretty much it's waiting, and you get a report uh, depending on your problem with proper evaluation metrics, uh, which is interesting because it's based in Power BI, it's completely Power BI, and you can also then publish this model immediately to use in Power BI or Power, Power Query data prep. So it's, it's really cool. So if you want to start, right, how to, how to start. So Power BI desktop, you can uh, download freely and install. It has the 64 bits version also. Actually, the December release, which features the small multiples, was published today. So grab it, really cool. Power BI is a, a huge community, so a huge amount of YouTube channels for learning. Power BI, I mean, it's it's not by lack of free available content or good teachers because there there is a, a ton of it. Really great community. Here in Portugal, we have uh, uh, our Power BI Portugal meetup, so be sure to check that and appear in, in the meetups. Very cool presentations. Um, okay, so just you know. Uh, not to, you, you, you allocate a, a lot of time and then you find out, so a few limitations, okay? So importantly, uh, said for me, and even not Microsoft looks into Power BI as a true data science machine learning workbench, I find that very sad, but it is what it is, okay? So you don't have native distribution plots, so you have to use custom visuals. It's not open source, okay? But I don't have a problem with that. I use a lot of open source, but Power BI, you know, it's 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 amazing. It's not also the best format because it is a binary format for continuous integration, but there are some improvements that, that you can do with Windows only. I'm sorry, typically people with, with Mac OS or Linux, uh, you can use VMs if, if you want. A lot of, um, a lot of uh, persons do that. Also, uh, reading Excel files and CSV, it's really damn, but it's really, I, I don't understand why, but it's really slow. It's, it's uh, But, okay, you load these once, and then it's damn fast. And usually, uh, it we should not be using CSV quite a lot. The problem is that, for example, for machine learning competitions, submissions typically are CSV. So, you know, I would be rather pleased to, to have some improvements on these. But so if you want to uh, check also some references that I do advise if you are working on data science and machine learning and you know uh, you, you, you become curious about Power BI, hopefully with this session, I hope. So a few reference that you can also check on the, on the slide. So actually the Author of PyCarrot, that is a, a very recent AutoML, very good tool for Python, for doing AutoML in, in Python, and he's a great fan of Power BI, and he has a huge am amount of amazing posts connecting Python, PyCarrot, and Power BI, from uh, normal detection, uh, AutoML, it's really cool, so be sure to check this resource. Um, one of my references for anything that relates to machine learning and data science, it's Sandeep Power. So everything that you may want to know regarding forecast in Power BI, uh, I mean, aside from the Power BI forecast team, I think he's the only one with uh, with a uh, similar knowledge. So he has an amazing uh, uh, post that you should check, not only for time series, but in forecasting. But So uh, David Eldersveld, so um, also has uh, uh, lots of good posts, for example, regarding how to connect Jupyter to Power BI Desktop, because you can now do that rather rather easily. So it's, it's really cool. So it opens a, a huge amount of possibilities, especially, I must say, especially for uh, AutoML. Okay, I still have, have that, that on my mind. But 
So, and with that, I want to thank you a lot. We are open, obviously, for questions, so fire them. And um, uh, my contacts are also on the on the deck. And let us know. So we have a lot of questions for. Okay. So I've read that Power BI with R or Python opens a new world of opportunities, but you don't seem to recommend. It's a matter of complexity. Okay, I don't know if I... So I, I think R, Python, and Power BI are amazing tools. I cannot recommend one over the other. I think you should use all of these tools for very specific use cases. I don't typically use R or Python visuals very often inside Power BI. You can, okay? Uh, you can actually build dynamic R visuals. Um, but uh, I do think in machine learning, currently there is too much code. Uh, it's my opinion, okay? It's way, way, way too much code and people do machine learning like if every line of machine learning code is gold, it's not. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me now? My mic uh, was off for some reason. Ah, yeah, I was reading the question. Yes, yes, no. Yeah. But you can hear me. Yeah, no. Okay. Uh, sorry for that. My mic was, uh, was down. No problem. So thank you for your answer. The next one. Do you always try to place your data science work inside the dimensional model, marrying BI with data science? Yeah, good, uh, you know, good question, because not always. Um, you know, it's my good feeling if it pays off. Uh, although I think in the ideal world, it should start with the semantic or dimensional, if you want, it should start with a semantic model and machine learning would come on top of that. And the semantic model would serve both BI workloads and machine learning workloads. But mostly these are still two different tracks. So it depends on the project. But uh, if I, I find that uh, it is a, a quick win and we can show value, also because very often people think no, they, they need machine learning or data science and they just need reports. Okay, it's, it, it is what it is. Thank you. The next question is, is functionality available on Power BI Premium per user or just Power BI service? So most of, most of what, I mean, I, I tried everything that I showed aside from the auto ML, you can get from the free Power BI desktop. So you download, you don't need even a, an account to work with the, with the Power BI desktop tool. The auto ML is available on the Power BI service and I think it's premium, a premium. Also, I'm not a Power BI expert, especially licensing, but uh, I tried 99% as, uh, aside from the auto ML is available freely on Power BI desktop. Otherwise, I, I probably would not mention here. A uh, follow-up question. Do you use Power BI professionally? Um, yes. You yes. yourself? The free version or the premium version? Uh, typically, I use the free version, but uh, a lot of clients with, with premium and uh, so. But, but uh, the free version is enough for most of your tasks? For everything that... Everything that I showed today, the Power BI desktop and the free version, uh, it's uh, it's enough as far as I know. Okay, I'm not a Power BI expert, so but I hope I'm not wrong. No, we are hoping for having your professional opinion as yes. someone that uses the tool uh, regularly. Uh, in your own practice, Rui, how often do you see your customers actually using Power BI Auto ML? This is your typical first go. Okay, good question. You know, I, I mentioned Power BI Auto ML. I think it's a, a first release as most Auto ML tools, okay, they are first releases. 
um, I don't think it's very frequent because there is not still um, uh, people are not used to connect these two worlds. Okay, it's not typical they split. Oh, but BI is for BI, and uh, so I don't think it's common. I want to believe that it will be much more common going forward. And Power BI also has to improve the auto ML capabilities even more because honestly, if data science and machine learning and predictive models will have the, the impact that we, we think they they will, then Power BI is sit on a, a on a gold mine because you have all the metadata. You have all the semantic models. Uh, Power BI knows what is a date table, uh, how, how, how the temporal information should be related to, to KPIs and business metrics. So it has all this metadata. It's the perfect data store for AutoML. It's not CSVs. CSVs are not great for AutoML, but a semantic model, it's huge. So in your opinion, uh, Power BI is uh, the right step or a step in the right direction for bringing AutoML within uh, the boundaries of a company or within the boundaries of BI business? I think it is a good first step, especially uh, especially if you have limited resources. I still do think, contrary here, probably not. I still do think that you need data science knowledge. So I, I'm not you know, very fond of AutoML tool are for business users. I, I uh, even you, you, you saw that like key influencers, it should be for data scientists. Um, uh, forecast, it should be for data scientists. AutoML, it should be for data scientists because otherwise you will shoot yourself in the foot. Okay. Thank you. We have uh, a lot more questions, by the way. Uh, which language do you prefer, R or Python? <laughs> Okay, so, you know, I, I, I've worked with R quite some time. Shiny is amazing. At the time there was no dash and Shiny is amazing. Uh, I switched to Python because I was really tired and getting old um, for following two languages. So there was one day with, without any further reason, R is an amazing, I, I cannot say it's better or worse than Python. I just, you know, I know R, now I will stick to Python and I promise myself, this will be the last language that I learned for coding because th the next one I want to code either in Portuguese or in English. I will not learn any new language. It's more than enough. Yeah. So, but both are good and um, so do you think Power BI will be a feasible no-code solutions for data science in the future? I would like to think so. I don't know if Microsoft has that uh, as a plan. So far, it, 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 it has not been the case. I think Power BI would make an amazing data science machine learning workbench, like the basis of everything, both BI and AI machine learning, but that is a very personal perspective. I don't think Microsoft shares shares that view. Uh, thank you for your question. I think for your answer. And uh, I think your dream of not want to learn a new programming language is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it's uh, I'm getting old. Yeah, I get you. Where can you find good training on Power BI AutoML? Uh, okay, Google. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> uh, I, there is a lot of, of content. Um, uh, honestly, it's not that I, I think if you know machine learning, uh, then it's not complex because all the familiar things that you would expect are there but are abstracted without code. So the rock curve, the lift, the precision, the recall, the root mean square error, all of that. Now, if you don't know anything about machine learning, it's it's that thing. Then I don't know how is it possible that someone can actually use AutoML uh, for for good purpose. Thank you. So you don't think that AutoML will be as automatic as people expect it to be? You know, it's... Um, I think machine learning is one of the areas where I felt 
it can be, for example, if uh, I actually said that to, to a friend a few years ago, if, if compared to the work of a, a machine learning like a grid search, shipper parameter, tuning, all of that, and the work from a, a, a BI modeler that builds semantic models, uh, I mean, machine learning is much more prone to automation because you have an objective uh, goal. Right when when you do semantic model, you don't. So um, I think probably it will not automate everything, but we need to automate because data scientists need to focus much more on the problem and less on coding. Asking a lot of questions, focus on the problem, problem and the data. But uh, and currently there's way too much code. It's it's an interesting opinion. Uh, what are real time dashboards? Uh, is Power BI as good as Grafana? Okay, so um, I am not an expert in in Grafana. Uh, Power BI can do real time. Uh, it can do real time, you know, rather easily. In a few minutes, you have a, a streaming uh, API that you can send your JSON uh, events to, and Power BI will uh, actually um, uh, will actually uh, update in real time. Actually, we we set up a completely real time for data science PT two or three years ago, a competition completely based on Power BI and the no code platform so where the results were being updated live i didn't eat a refresh on that page a single time throughout the date uh, throughout the day, the day i think and it worked perfectly now probably it is not as flexible in real time and as powerful as grafana probably but you know as a starting point uh, it's an amazing tool i uh, used uh, several times I may add something here. I have yeah. used Grafana uh, in our research in the university, and it does not offer the capabilities of a Power BI as a BI tool. It's only okay. a real-time dashboard that shows uh, streaming data in uh, different types of plots. So it, it may be faster as a real-time dashboard, but does it have the functionality that Power BI uh, was? Yeah. Yeah, Power BI okay. is as that's as so many features. It's 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 uh, it's amazing. The following question: With all these features, Power BI is on par with Tableau. That's an awesome question. I really don't have a clue because I don't use Tableau. Uh, but I uh, I must say that probably. 80 or 90 percent of what I showed and the use cases that I shared today, you pretty much probably can do with Tableau. Okay, I don't know Tableau, I never use Tableau, so uh, just for you to understand that what I share with you today is not actually specific for Power BI, is is more uh, wise. So you can pretty much convert a lot of what I said to Tableau, and probably it would work. So I think both are the top two tools uh, in this space right now, so. Okay, thank you. I also haven't uh, had any uh, knowledge with Tableau, but it appears uh, interesting. When reports are for become slow and heavy, making slow loading for users, what will your first recommendation? I would strongly recommend what I do is uh, checking with uh, someone that actually knows how to do Power BI following best practices because I'm not that guy. So if I have that kind of troubles, I check with our BI team. So uh, because there are several rules uh, that uh, if, if you want to really don't want to have problems, Further on, uh, you should you should prepare your your uh, semantic model properly. You should know DAX a little bit because that will have a huge uh, effect on the the responsiveness and then the performance of dashboards. Typically, more for the exploratory data analysis, I completely bypass all the best practices. So that's that's what it is. So it's fast enough. Uh, it's them fast. I mean, it's you, you can 
pretty much use millions of rows because it has the column store engine. Um, so for typical, not very large data sets, it's, it's really, really fast. We are reaching the last six questions, I think. Okay. Can you describe how Power BI was used in the competition? Okay, so uh, in the current one, uh, uh, okay, in the current one, I, I can share, for example, Explore. Actually, it is very interesting because it's, it is actually an image-based competition. Uh, so it's not even, uh, we have to predict the wind speed based on images, on satellite images, but we have uh, we have time, we have temporal information, for example. So it's 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 very useful for analyzing th that. For example, in our past Kaggle competition that we won, the forecast one um, at at Kaggle for today's, we use mostly for exploring the original time series. For example, detecting that probably the call center was closed on the morning of 25th of December until 10 a.m. How would you detect that with a feature importance or it's really, and by exhaustive, and by exhaustive, I'm meaning exhaustive exploratory data analysis of all the dimensions, all the possibilities on Power BI, we leverage a lot of insights. Uh, we compare the every submission with uh, with other submissions, so we use uh, a lot. If if you want to know more, there's a slide share you can check. Uh, Kaggle Dash Porto, for example, uh, Kaggle Dash Porto. I know Dev School probably, and you will get a, a deck with main insights that we get, both from a modeling perspective, obviously with YGBM and ensembles and all of that, and a few screens of the Power BI. Okay, thank you and. Check the, the slides if you are interested in the competition. Yeah. What kind of tools would you use to deploy uh, an ML model as an API and consume it with Power BI? I, I can I can tell you one of Power BI Auto ML is one that, that you can use. There is actually one that is also very interesting. It's the Azure uh, Machine Learning Auto ML, which you, you can use for free because you only have to pay the compute if you pay the, the compute but if you use the auto ml from the start you can after the, the you pick the best model you can publish with a single step and as it will publish the metadata uh, to the to the web service the api power query automatically will access that machine learning and you can use that model on the data prep step at any step, you can invoke the, the machine learning model, for uh, for example. Okay, uh, but uh, if you have other APIs, Power BI actually can use uh, Power Query on data prep. Pretty much any uh, REST API that that you make available, so it works rather easily with that. Okay, thank you. Do you see uh, Power BI integration with Azure Machine Learning Studio in the near future? It produces lots of logs and it's hard to visualize auto ML functionality outside of the recommended models, uh, visuals. Okay, uh, let me, so Azure Machine Learning Studio, because it's not, it's not easy because you have an old machine learning studio and now you have the new Azure Machine Learning that is, I don't think it's called actually the studio. So, Mm -mm. But I, I do think that Power BI and the Azure Machine Learning Studio should have uh, the, the integration will be increasing. It already does exist. It, it's true. It produces a, a, a huge amount of uh, of logs. I don't understand here the the, the, the recommended visuals. I'm, I'm assuming that this is the Auto ML from Power BI. So the, the issue is that the, the Power BI, if you run the AutoML from Power BI, it's, it's really, uh, you, you are kind of a limited, um, uh, I would probably recommend that you use the AutoML on Azure Machine Learning. That would be probably my, my recommendation for now, but the question is not that clear, sorry. Uh, if you want to redo the question, you still have time. I still have some four more. How does AutoML work with Power BI tool within the Power BI tool? 
Okay, so it, it, right now it does not work with Power BI Desktop, but it works with the service, and I think with the, with the, the premium the premium uh, service. But you you publish a semantic model. You have a semantic model in the service online in the cloud in this case, and then with a simple wizard, you just select what is the entity, what is the table, like it is the customer, the customer's table, and then you have to pick the field that you want to build the model, pick how many hours typically that you want to train. And here I don't know what is the, the then obsession with with hours training because typically. Um, uh, very often you will have a reasonable model in a few minutes, but uh, you can pick uh, uh, one hour training and it will go uh, on its way producing and trying a lot of different uh, models. And at, when it's ready, you will have a, a final report documenting all the features, all the evaluation performance metrics. And if you want, you can publish that model to make available as an API. Okay, thank you. And what are the alternatives? Okay, I'm imagining that this is what are the alternatives to Power to BI. Power. Yes. Okay. There are not alternatives. <laughs> so I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. Pro probably, I mean, I, I, we spoke about uh, Tableau. Uh, obviously, I don't know Tableau, but uh, probably a, a good tool. Um, and I mean, for, for this, for this case, uh, these use cases that I showed today, I think there are, you know, because doing that manually, that's my point, with R or Python, you should free your data science teams uh, for other stuff, okay? That is just, it's too much work, okay? Just use Power BI or Tableau or whatever for this kind of analysis because it's it's more than, than enough. Okay. The last two questions, at least for now, how does it compare with alternatives? Okay, again, it's it's uh, it's an amazing tool. I can say, if I'm remembering right, that typically um, it, it is what, what it is, but uh, like Gartner Quadrants and the, typically it's uh, I mean, the best, I don't know if it's the top one tool, but if it is not, probably it shares with, with Tableau, but it's, one of the most amazing BI tools and uh, exploratory data analysis and data visualization uh, these days. The price and the fact that you can start and you can use Power BI Desktop free obviously has a lot of implications. That's why, that's why you have a huge community uh, for Power BI. And if you are using, I must say, if you are using uh, Microsoft Cloud, Microsoft Technologies, then it is perfect because it will integrate with everything, you know, Teams, uh, Azure, uh, pretty much everything. It, it has strong integration. So if, if you are doing Microsoft, then you have all the advantages of using Power BI for, for analytics and hopefully data science and machine learning too. Okay, thank you. This is the last question that I have. If anyone else uh, in the audience wants to make a question, please answer it now. You have the time that Rukintino uses to reply to this one. So is there a way to, of using Power BI as part of continuous integration pipeline, for instance, to create instant reports with model training performance? Yes, there, there are actually quite some ways, and our BI team is are actually experts. You should check with with uh, Rui Romano uh, on uh, enabling CI/CD for Power BI in uh, several different ways. Uh, model training with AutoML it's probably a little bit more complex, and for that I don't have an answer honestly. But uh, CI/CD, or even if Power BI is not exactly uh, fi uh, text files like you typically have with code, it is possible. It is possible to, to use CI CD with Power BI for enterprise uh, scenarios. So it is possible. If you can check uh, Rui Romano of our uh, BI team, our head of BI, so. Okay, there is no more questions. Uh, I have to thank you for all your uh, effort in your great presentation and your uh, replies to the community. My pleasure. Thank you.
probably they, they they will want to hear more from you and they will uh, search you yeah i will be i will stick uh, in the in the live chat for a quite some time and browse through all the questions and feedback and, and share some we still uh, have time today so oh i feel the audience will like that very much so i want to thank you before we go i have to uh, remind you all that you have a call for proposals if you have any interesting project if you have done some research in machine learning if you uh, have any interesting idea in machine learning or data science please submit your uh, information in our uh, formulary and we'll uh, evaluate your uh, proposal idea and you may be selected as a speaker for next year uh, we also have a survey it's very important to us that you feel this honestly we are still trying to make the webinars feel as close as possible to the physical events there are serious limitations. We cannot uh, mimic all, but we are trying. So please fill the survey with all the information as honestly as possible so you can try to improve this format for you. This uh, webinar was a little bit different, was not so uh, theoretical. It was uh, a hands-on approach in a tool. Tell us if you like this type of content, what content that you prefer. Do you want uh, an even uh, follow-up uh, session to this where someone can try and do uh, a live demo of a tool uh, in, a, in, a web, uh, in a webinar? Please tell us your thoughts, your opinions, how can we improve? And we'll do our best to uh, fix all of our issues. And that is all from the DSPT team. I want to thank you all for being here and listening to our uh, webinar. Hope to see you in our next event that probably will be in January. So happy Christmas and happy holidays for all and stay safe. Data science has been becoming a growing profession and is also the heart of many organizations. That's why Data Science Portugal was born. The first community created by data scientists for data scientists. DSPT wants to gather anyone who works in the field and chat about any topic over this great subject. All members from our team are committed to make sure that the data science field evolves in a healthier and stronger way. To ensure that the focus is on sharing knowledge, we guarantee that our stage is not a place that supports any commercial or recruitment content, and our kind speakers are committed to share their experience for free. We want you. Let's do bigger things together. Join us at any event all around Portugal or online.